A few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, listen good. A few weeks ago, a young brother released an album called Damn. I don't want y'all to get mad with me. Don't get mad with me. The name of his album is Damn. Now, I really don't listen to rap at all. I couldn't tell y'all rappers. Only one I know. Jay-Z's a rapper. That's all I know. Damn, I'll be all messed up on that, that game show. I named 10 rappers. I don't know. Anyway, young brother, uh, his name, help me out here. Kendrick Lamar, thank you. Y'all young ones know this. I ain't old, I'm 25. <laughs> anyway, a young brother named Kendrick Lamar released the album called Damn. Uh, don't be offended at the word. The word damn is all in your Bible. Some of your mothers are damned. Give me that, so you know I ain't joking. Second Thessalonians 2. Some of your fathers are damned. You know what verse I want, right, Liam? Yes, sir. They looking at, he used the word damn. Is it 10, verse 10? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Nope. That they all might be. Verse 12. Okay. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth. You see that? That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. That's why I said some of your mothers are damned. Some of your fathers, some of your kids are damned. Don't get mad at me. I'm just the messenger. So now, don't be offended. Y'all know I'm not a rap fan. But this album became a buzz. When I say a buzz, it has become a buzz because he said he's an Israelite. He didn't say Pan-African. Egyptologist, nation of Israel. He said Israelite. Now, had he said he was nation of Islam or Pan-African, it would have went, yeah. nobody would have really gave, it would have been, oh, that's a good album. That's a, but because he said, I'm an Israelite, he said, don't call me black no more. That's a color of a crayon in the crayon box, something like that. Everybody mad. I'm going to show you how mad they are. <laughs> now, we may have an audience, Israelites, when you go on YouTube, Israelite audience generally is about in the thousands. But this young man has an audience of millions. Like I said, Esau thinks, Esau can see way ahead. We see it, we go, oh, that was a good album. The white man's like, and when they commune with each other, no. Do you know how far the message that he's an Israelite, you know how many people follow him? How many people look up to him? This went to millions of people. How'd y'all let this get out like that? Right. Fire somebody. I want somebody fired. A lot fired. of people got fired. All kind of things going on right now. <laughs> Edomites is mad all across the country. Blacks and Latinos tend to see things and hear. And now that's why I gave the example of the, the ripple effect. Right. Exactly. There's going to be repercussions behind that. And the white man knows. Remember in the book, uh, uh, Making a Slave. Remember they said we could keep blacks in confusion for centuries unless some phenomenon right. occurs, right. Exactly. which is this Bible. Yep. Okay, now I'm going to show you our video. Yeah, Willie Lynch, I'm sorry. What did I say? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. a now I'm going to show you our video. It's a commentary. Pay attention now. Now, he caught, now I looked at some of his oldest Edomite videos. He loves Kendrick Lamar until... Uh-oh, wait a minute now. Did y'all hear what this Listen to said? what this Edomite says about this young man. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Go, ahead. Go ahead and play it. So, Dam is here, and Kendrick once again has hit us with an artistic left hook. Because this record is far from being the grand jazz-influenced meditation on self-worth that To Pimp a Butterfly was. This album brings an entirely different sound, and on top of that, while it is conceptual, I think Kendrick approaches concept in a really fractured way, totally unlike uh, what anybody has heard on Good Kid Mad City or To Pimp a Butterfly, where you might have multiple ideas, but they all kind of coalesce to one point. Before I get too deep into Damn, let me just say, I'm pretty floored by the fact that Kendrick, with each project, has reinvented himself almost entirely from top to bottom, and in this case, in a really short amount of time. Now, in comparison with everything Kendrick has released thus far, Damn is his most scattered 
album. Even though it may not be as dense or as thematic as Good Kid Mad City or To Pimp a Butterfly, it's harder to compartmentalize because there's so much going on. This is Kendrick's most raw and intense album emotionally, whether that be tracks that have an incredible amount of aggression and grit, or just really pain, sorrow, and depression. Now, what is guiding this change of pace? It may have a lot to do with the Fox News clip that he plays toward the beginning of the album, where his art, his BET performance specifically, I believe, was misconstrued as being uh, bad for black culture, bad for black people, uh, bad for race relations in America. And this clip that he plays is not the only time in the mainstream media Media that Kendrick's art has been interpreted in this way. Now, Kendrick has taken this slander against his art personally, obviously, uh, but I think he's also taken it as a challenge on this album to basically say, hey, you know, you, you want the angry, hedonistic, violent rap guy? I'll give him to you. I'll be that guy. I'll hop on a trap banger. I'll get in other rappers' faces. I'll play that role. I'll get nasty like that. I'll play dirty. And the way he goes about embodying this on this record, I think, is really creative. Not just with the heightened aggression of this album, not just with his interesting approaches between him and his producers to contemporary flows and production styles, but there are actually quite a few moments on this record where you get like these uh, reverb DJ drops on the record uh, that's just like, hey, new Kung Fu Kenny, boo! Like, I'm listening to some mixtape that I downloaded off a of Dat Piff. But the decision to go into this direction runs even deeper than this, as Kendrick uses this as an opportunity to comment on hip hop culture at large and race relations in a post Obama America. And I would say there's one more major layer to this album, which is addressed on a couple of tracks here, uh, but it's not uh, something that is spoken about throughout the entire record. And that's that I genuinely think Kendrick is depressed on this album. Seriously, I don't think we've ever heard Kendrick on a record consistently sounding so unhappy, so unsure of himself, sounding this vulnerable. I mean, even on the darkest moments of Good Kid Mad City and on To Pimp a Butterfly, it still felt like we were listening to an artist who knew where he was going, that everything he was doing was being orchestrated as some part of grand plan. A lot like the God he's been so sure is looking out for him, on his previous projects. But on Damn, Kendrick is shaken, not just in regards to his faith, but I think his moral compass as well. And those two things are really important, pivotal things to a Kendrick Lamar project. Those things usually play pretty central roles uh, when it comes to keeping his mind right. And with those two things deteriorating on this record, Kendrick's message sounds way more unresolved and conflicted than I thought it would be going into this record. It may also have to do with the fact that he's taking on such huge concepts stated in bold capitalized lettering in the titles of these tracks. Pride, lust, fear, God, etc. These are things that philosophers have been mulling over for thousands and thousands of years. I don't expect all of their intricacies to be explained in a 55-minute rap album. But Damn isn't so much about the answer to anything as much as it is about the struggle to understand. Something that's especially intense and difficult for Kendrick because his savior complex drives him to have that answer. It drives him to have that solution. It also feeds a loneliness in him on the song Feel, where he sort of portrays himself as uh, the savior, as the hero, as the provider, but nobody is saving or providing for him. Nobody's praying for him. And even though he may have legions of fans who are certainly concerned with his well-being and his mental state, when you put yourself in that position, you still can't help but feel that way occasionally. And again, faith also drives the struggle of this album, because on numerous occasions, Kendrick has said that he does what he does with his music as some kind of service to God. But then he's left with no solid conclusions or answers when he feels like he's been left behind by this God to suffer and to struggle, which he takes as some kind of sign from God comparing himself to Job, which happens on the song Fear, which if you're unfamiliar with it, it's basically a biblical story about a man, Job, who God essentially tears his life apart as a test of his faith and his love. It's on the same track where I think Kendrick's faith, his belief in God, takes the ugliest turn that it has on any project that he's released so far. Uh, right at the very end of the song, Fear, where we hear a voicemail from his cousin Carl, which he alludes to on the song, Yah. And if you look at this uh, voicemail, 
It's pretty interesting. Referencing Deuteronomy, Carl makes the case that Kendrick is unhappy, he's struggling, he's unsure of things because he's kind of drifted away from God's light. He's not living up to the commandments, the statutes, the laws set by God, uh, pretty much the, the Christian God. He then makes the case that black people, Hispanic people, and Native American people are the true children of Israel, which seems harmless on its face. That's fine. But then that is channeled into every injustice over the course of history being interpreted as a punishment by God because these groups of people have drifted away from the, the word of, of God. And this is pretty much presented without comment. Um, I, I don't see Kendrick criticizing this idea. It's just kind of thrown out there. Again, on the song Ya, yeah, where Kendrick references this call, references this voicemail, I, from, from the few things he says about it, I'm led to believe that he thinks that there's at least some truth to it. Now, let me just say before I go much further, I outright disagree with this on every level. I personally feel it's bullshit and stupid to chalk up mass genocide, slavery, Jim Crow, the Mexican-American War, and countless other things to uh, some kind of divine punishment. The roots of these injustices are political, they're social, they're economic. To blame it all on God's will just kind of seems disgusting to me. Bordering on self-hatred and most definitely self-flagellation. And in my opinion, the exact opposite of being conscious. Now my ideological disagreement here didn't really factor into my overall feelings um, with the album, especially since this voicemail does happen to land on what I felt was one of the better tracks on the record. But I do think moments like this should not be overlooked by the listener. In fact, they should be at the forefront of the listener's mind while they listen to this album because this idea of God punishing Kendrick for not living up to the moral code that he should is part of the reason he's suffering on this record. This is the mentality that he's beating himself up with on this record when you see him going into those dark places. He's rationalizing his own pain and suffering as being the decision of some supreme being that he's never seen, and all he can do is just throw himself at God's mercy and say, please don't do this, please don't take all my success and everything away. Uh... For me personally, walking around with that mentality, that view of the world, I would go crazy. It would be like walking on hot coals for the rest of my life or going into a fucking wood chipper feet first. Now I would say those are the major themes of the Well alrighty then. The white man's the devil that the Bible speaks of. Can I get a con con out of one con? <laughs> he said Kendrick is depressed. He said, how can you go around thinking that all your socioeconomic and, uh, woes is because of some God? Okay, let's say it's because of you, Mr. White Man. Any problem we go through is because of you. <laughs> he didn't want to hear that, though. He didn't want to hear that. Doesn't the scripture, give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. This is what the Lord says. This is what he says. See, that's what I said. And he only, there's only a few lines to the album, but white people are furious behind those few lines. Read that. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Right. So being depressed, it's not the depression that you're thinking of, like, oh, I just want to kill myself. No. We, our eyes are open like he started off in the record. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 28. This was the reference that he made in the album. Okay, there were a lot of bombs in the album. I can't, I can't listen to it too much, but this one part I listened to. Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness. And right, when it says the Lord shall smite you with uh, madness, we're mad because of the things that we see, the oppressions that our people go through. That doesn't make us want to slit our wrist. And nobody's crying, oh, God, don't take away my success. No! We're throwing ourselves to the mercy of the Lord to get us out of here, to get us away from you Edomites. How about that? They don't want to hear that, though. You want to leave us? Yeah, we want to leave you. We want to have a good day. Yes. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Notice he said, he said that in his opinion, that takes you away from being, con away from being conscious. It takes you away from being conscious. He, he wants him to remain in that conscious mindset, that apple-centric mindset that he thought he was under, which he was never under. Okay, but that's what he wants him to stay under. I was saying earlier in class today. 
they compared him. They, they like him to be like a Tupac Shakur, meaning be socially conscious to a point. Okay, just deal with the economic problem, the imprisonment, stay there. But don't dare delve into that Bible. Exactly. That's, 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 the, that's the problem. The Bible has always been the problem. Okay, that's why I want y'all, the white man knows the power is in the book. And that's where the fear comes in. Like we've been reading all day. The prophecies are coming to pass. Now whether uh, the brother Kendrick Lamar repents of his sins, it's neither here nor there. We want him to, but the point is the brief message he put reached millions. It opened to doors. Others may, see the white man said, he don't see it just as an album. He says there's going to be an effect. He spoke the words of God. It's going to have an effect. That is the fear. That is the fear. Now watch this. Give me the next article. It's an article. We got to read this article. I'm going to show you how mad people are. Now our prayer for all our brothers, even in the conscious community, the comedic community, we, we pray that our people repent and come back to the truth of the Bible. So don't think that what I'm saying is based upon hatred for any of our people. It's not. On the contrary. So here, here's an article. A fresh word. Let's go down. Okay, they wrote an article on Kendrick Lamar. I'm going to read it. My blog has readers of all different ages, races, and cultures. With that in mind, we have to spend a little time explaining the background to this issue. So I have to do a lot of setting up. There's a young rapper who is very talented and socially conscious. His name is Kendrick Lamar. He is the young people's version of Tupac Shakur. Honestly, he is much better than Pac, so far as his walk actually matches his talk. Now, they show you Tupac there, and they show you a little uh, Kendrick Lamar there. Right? You see the picture? See the picture? But notice in the background, see who's in the background? Bugs Bunny. Go ahead, go up, go up. I know it's the wrong music, right? Kendrick dropped his latest album on what traditionalists call Good Friday. His album is littered. Notice the word littered. That's a word chosen for a reason. Did you hear that? Littered. His album is littered with Hebrew Israelite references and theology. He is very influential, and people are already gravitating to the more religious aspect of his new work. That's a problem. That is the That's problem. That's the problem Houston, right there. we have a problem. We have a problem. Watch the next sentence. I predict that he will lead many young men away from the Christ of the scriptures. No, lead them away from, lead them away from white supremacy yes. called Christianity. Yes. That's what they mean. Exactly. He lead them away from Cesar Bogia. Yeah. Y'all all right? Come on. Here we, go. Here, we go. Here we go. Here we go. So who are the Hebrew Israelites? That is a hard question because there are so many disparate camps within their theological umbrella. They actually are very divided and sometimes passionately hate one another. So this is, wait, go back to the picture. So this is someone who has been watching right. the Israelites for a very long time. For them to say that. So, watch this. Now, let me say this. Give me Leviticus 19.17. No, this is a message to any Israelite camp who has hatred one for another. We are not supposed to hate one another according to the law. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Now give me First John. Was it, is it 3.15, 2.15? But whosoever hated his brother, that one. Thank you. First John 3.15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So, to my fellow... Israelites, my fellow brothers and sisters, the white man knows that some of you have such a profound hatred against us and other Israelite camps that is unbelievable. We must begin to apply the scriptures. Long, you breathe and you're still alive, there's hope for you, brothers, sisters, there's hope for you. Don't get mad because we don't 
talk Hebrew. None of you talk Hebrew either. I have yet to see a video where they're teaching Hebrew to the people. Full Hebrew. I'm talking about the sky is blue Hebrew. The grass is green Hebrew. What time is it Hebrew? That's what I'm talking about. There's no videos like that. So don't get mad or have hatred for us because we don't push Hebrew. Also, the other, there's certain other camps who's angry and mad with us because of Northern Kingdom. Well, if you say the only Israelites are Africans, I ain't seen no videos with you in Africa teaching not near one soul. So what you're mad for? Just teach the word and let's keep it moving. So in essence, we're still teaching Northern Kingdom. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So now let's get back to the article. Plan up to the top. Up, 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 up. Let's start right there. However, here is an overview of what most Hebrew Israelites believe. With the exception of the italicized sentences, most of the Hebrew beliefs are provided by a Christian researcher. Oh, look. Vo, bum, dummy, vocab, Malone, that Edomite. This guy, he is so fearful of this truth. I will separate these beliefs into heretical, heterodoxical, and true but typically ignored by the Christian church. Hetero, heterodox means not conform to their orthodox beliefs, meaning it's a heterodox or a heresy because we don't believe Jesus is white, according to scriptures. It is a heterodox or heresy that we don't follow Christmas or Easter. Right. So basically they're saying that if you're not with us, you're ostracized, and he yes. wants us to have that, we wants us to have that, uh, in, that, that thought in our mind. Exactly. Okay, heretical, not compatible with Christ followers. So he's saying the Israelites are heretical. We're not following Christ. Really? Number one, Hebrew Israelites believe the times of the Gentiles means the time of the white Europeans, whom they refer to as Edomites or Esau. They believe that this time is almost over. America and its allies will soon be judged. You got that right. Yes, sir. You and got that right. Hey. That's what they told you in the Bible dictionary. So what is he talking about? Exactly. <laughs> Real quick, give me Daniel 2 about the statue. Here's the times of the Gentiles. Remember we read earlier in 1 Ezra 8, 69, Esau is not the only Gentile. This is the Mr. Hey, and Mr. What's their name for vocab? What they call? No, no, they call him something else. No dab. Uh, it's a spoof on his name. No flow, Valone, something like that, whatever it is. Anyway, hate to disappoint you. White folks, you are not the only Gentiles. You are the end of the Gentile era. You got the statue for me in Daniel 2? Verse, you want verse 44? It, when it names the gold, it names all of them. Just get through it quick. Daniel chapter 2, verse 31. Uh -huh. Thou, O king, saw us and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee. And the form thereof was terrible. This image head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver. Stop. The fine gold is the Babylonian empire. This is the times of the Gentiles, the Babylonians. Then the next one said what? His breast and his arms of silver. Silver, that's the Persians and the Medes. Go ahead. His belly and his thighs of brass. That's the Greeks. Go ahead. His legs of iron. His that's Rome. His feet part of iron and part of clay. That's America and the European Union. That is the times of the Gentiles. Okay. Everybody understand that? Okay. Number two. Hebrew Israelites believe righteousness is achieved by law keeping, strict Sabbath keeping, dietary restrictions, and a certain physical appearance are important. Example given, fringes and beards are good. Give me Revelation 22, 14. They believe righteousness is kept by law keeping. Let's see what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates. You only enter in the gates by keeping God's commandments. That's right. So yeah, it, I mean, Revelation 14, 12, go ahead. So it sounds like instead of us leaving Christ, we're going to Christ. There you go right there. That's it. That's what it sounds like to me. Exactly. Read Re that. Revelation 14 and 12. Here 
is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Y'all see that? So, miss this article. These guys are idiots. So, if that's a heresy, then we on the right track then. Everybody understand that? These people are crazy. These Edomites, but that's their job to cause confusion. Okay. But, but they're not really crazy because they know what they put up there. Mm -hmm. They're just thinking that you, by reading it, that you go back to sleep. Right. The proof is the fact that look how much attention they're paying. To, look how much attention that they're paying to this. Exactly. Number three, Hebrew Israelites believe Edomites, white people, can't be saved. <laughs> Didn't we just read about that? Lord have mercy. <laughs> They are destined to be killed or slaves for Hebrew Israelites after the Messiah returns. Others believe Gentiles, non-Hebrew Israelites, can be grafted into the kingdom if they keep the law and are under the authority of a Hebrew Israelite. They wish that was true. Yeah, they wish that part was <laughs> true. But listen, they they all going to get the kingdom. Yeah, They're going to be for in servitude. They're going to be cleaving to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. They're going to do what the scriptures say. Until. And at the end. There you go. Bye-bye, Esau. Bye-bye. He is not. He, right? he, is, he is not. not. Right. He is not. Exactly. That's where, after he's burned, then we can say he then is not. Then we can not. say he is not. <laughs> now, look at this. Number four. Number four. Hebrew Israelites believe both heaven and hell are conditions, mere states of mind, neither are viewed as metaphysical realities as they are in Orthodox Christianity. Well, listen, there's no hell in the center of the earth. Can, I, can you go back to what I'm reading? There's no hell in the center of the earth, but there is a lake of fire, okay? And that is going to be hell on earth, okay? There's no Christianity either in the Bible. Exactly. Christianity is nowhere in the Bible whatsoever. Right. You won't find the word Christianity in the Bible. You'll see the word Christian, but not Christianity. Heterodoxical, not totally incompatible with Christianity, just either not definitely proven or not in line with Scripture. That's what they're saying about us. Number one. Hebrew Israelites believe those whose ancestors were put in bondage during the transatlantic slave trade are the true descendants of biblical Israel. That is true. Give me that. Luke 21. Y'all got to pay attention to how Esau says things too because he speaks thinking that his whiteness has an effect on us. He'll say what he'll say something like Hebrew Israelites believe and we'd be like, oh, okay. Like we ain't going to read the Bible. The hell with you. The Bible says what it says. Like we ought to just say, oh, because he said it. Right. No, no, no. Exactly. Read Luke that. 21 verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until their rulership is up. Now, to show you what happened... I got this book. I saw you guys were talking about this a while ago. It's called The Encyclopedia of the Jewish Diaspora. You mean a Negro didn't write that? No, book? a Negro didn't write this. Origins, Experiences, and Culture by M. Avram Elric, editor. This is volume two. I'm going to read a part in the book. Now, they always, they, they litter, I, used, I chose that word specifically for a reason. They litter the book with lies, trying to say that they're the Jews. But I'm going to read something, what they say. Mm -mm. Now, we, we just read about 70 AD. Is that right, Officer Leon? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me see what I want to read. I'm going to get to some key points. Mm. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. We are going to read. Okay. I'm on page 453. According to most accounts, the earliest Israeli settlements in Africa were in places such as Egypt, Tunisia, and Ethiopia. Historians believe that settlements may have been in existence as early as the kingdoms of David and Solomon, as well as during the Assyrian invasion of northern Israel in 722 BCE and the Babylonian captivity of Judah in 586 BCE in the Punic Carthaginian age. These communities were augmented by subsequent arrivals of Jews, watch this, after the destruction of the second Jerusalem in 70 CE, that's what we just read in Luke 21-24, when 30,000 Jewish slaves were settled throughout Carthage by the Roman Emperor Titus. Now I'm going to jump over. Right, that backs of Rudolph R. Windsor. Now remember, white man wrote this. In later centuries, Jews are believed to have settled in Western Africa during the height of the Songhai, Mali, 
Ghana, and Kanem Bornu empires. According to accounts from the explorers of the region, several powerful Jewish families of the Songhai Empire were of Jewish origin until Askia Muhammad came to power and in 1492 decreed that all Jews either convert to Islam or leave the region. So now in it, he goes into Mali, he goes into Nigeria, he goes into Cape Verde, he goes into a whole list of places where Israel fled and went down into. So, back to Mr. Vocab Malone and all these other Edomites. We know the Bible, you don't. Now, while we were in Africa, we were there for a little over a thousand years. What happened? You had the white man with the Arabs and certain African chiefs round up the Israelites and sell some of us on this side of the world. Deuteronomy 28, 68, please. I'm just going to read one verse. This is what makes them mad. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt means bondage or captivity. Read. We went into captivity with ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. No man shall buy us. So, now when we go back to this, so we're proving these Edomites wrong week after week, class after class. And they're just furious that a young rapper put a few lines a few of this lines. truth. Just a few lines. Not a two-hour lesson. Just a few lines. Have y'all seen this much outrage against the KKK? No. <laughs> but they are against four lines. Exactly. Then you know how powerful four lines are in comparison to hundreds of hate groups all around the country. There you go. Look at this. Here we go. Number two. Hebrew Israelites believe modern-day Israelites and Europeanized Jews are imposters and not the real descendants of true Israel. That is a fact. Can we get Revelation 2.9? They try to make it, the way they talk, they try to make like it's, like it's preposterous or something crazy for us to say that. Right. Their own people say that. Right. Uh, 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 what's that Edomite's name? 13th tribe? Arthur Kosler. Arthur Kosler did a whole book on it. Right. 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 Uh, they try to make it sound like it's ridiculous to say these things. It's not ridiculous because like, he, like you just said, their own scholars say this. Exactly. Read that. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's the white man. That's right there. Now give me that next precept in Ezekiel. Is it 36 and 5? Or I think it's 36 5. About they took the land. You know what I want, Officer Liam? Come on. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia is the Greek word for Edom. I'm going to say it again. Idumia is the Greek word for Edom. Go ahead. Which have appointed my land into their possession. You see that? With the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. So that ain't, that ain't all we got, Mr. White Man. We're just going to give you a few scriptures. Now give it Joel 3 and 2. See, they like to study us. We ain't going to give you all the scriptures we got, Mr. White Man. Because when we meet you face to face on the street... The Spirit of God will destroy your red behind. Understand that. Read that. Joel chapter 3 verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. What happened to Israel? Go ahead. Whom they have scattered among the nations. In slavery. That's what we read in Luke 21, 24, Deuteronomy 28, 68. Go ahead. And parted my land. Who parted the land? Edom and the Palestinians. Who parted the land? Edom, like we read in Ezekiel 36 and 5, and the Palestinians. So what we're reading, the Bible. So anywhere they go, we're going to smash them. The Spirit of God is going to crush them. They don't want this truth to come out. I got something. This is uh, go ahead, I got something here. I didn't get a chance to use it before. I'm going to use it now. A Jewish encyclopedia uh, says in the book, Edom is an Edom is in modern Jewry. Jewish Encyclopedia, 1925, edition 
volume five, page forty one. Uh, uh, Edom is uh, Edom. Edomites became a section of the Jewish people. Edom, Encyclopedia Judaica, nineteen seventy one. Uh, from then on, they um, constituted a part of the Jewish people. Herod, king of Judea, being one of their ancestors, descendants. Jewish Encyclopedia, 1977, page 589. In all their encyclopedias revised each time, they make it clear that they're descendants of Edomites. This is in Jewish encyclopedias. Uh, and it's letting you know they're still around. <laughs> right. It's letting you know it's still around because he's reading the dates, 1970, this and that and the other, and it's tell, telling you that they're here. Exactly, exactly. And Bishop. When all is said and done, let's say you don't want to believe that Edom is who we say they are. Who can you put in there? Always throw that question back at them. Who is it that their scholars, their Bible dictionaries say, the group of people that God says that he hates, and there's a great scene of future judgment for them? Who is that? Because the burden of proof is on you, not on us. Exactly. You got it? I, I just want y'all to see what Deacon Nathan was reading so we can read it for uh, ourselves. I know we got some doubting Thomases out there. I'm not sure if that's what he read. But I know, that, I know what their problem is. Because the Bible condemns them. The Bible itself condemns them. The reason why they say all of this, all they, the reason why they talk the way they talk is because they hope that their quote-unquote whiteness will cause us to lose confidence to believe it was written. Right. And also, one more thing, just in case Esau decides to remove this, we have the books, by the way. Right. Put it out there. We have the encyclopedia. So, so, I so if you want to. What were you Bible reading you on here to. so we can see it? It says, um, Jewish Encyclopedia, Judaica, 1971, Edomites. Wait, where are you at? Let me um, see. The non, the start from the, um, why does the Jewish Encyclopedia. Okay, I'll, let me read it. Why does the Jewish Encyclopedia mention that Edom is in modern Jewry? That is their own writings, not the clan. Oh. Why the KKK reference, and where is your proof? Edom is in modern Jewry. The Jewish Encyclopedia, 1925 25. edition, volume 5, page 41. The non-Israelite Edomites became a section of the Jewish people. Edom, Encyclopedia Judaica, Jerusalem, Israel, Encyclopedia Judaica, Company, 1971, volume 6, page 378. Well, Bishop, they're telling you that they're not Jews. Right. Look at that Look at that line again. The non-Israelite Edomites became mm -hmm. a section of the Jewish people, meaning they damn behind are imposters. That's what he's telling you. Exactly. They, the non-Israelite Edomites, were then incorporated with the Jewish nation, Edom, Idumia, the Jewish Encyclopedia, New York and London, Funk and Wagner's Company, 1904, volume 5, page 41. From then on, they, the non-Israelite Edomites, constituted a part of the Jewish people, Herod, king of Judea, that's Luke 1 and 5, right? Mm -hmm. Being one of their descendants, Edom, Idumia, the new standard Jewish encyclopedia, Garden City, New York, Doubleday and Company Incorporated, 1977, page 589. Next one, they, the Edomites, were hereafter no other than non-Israelite Jews. Flavius Josephus, the Antiquities of the Jews, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Driegel Publications, 1960, 13. Chapter 9, verse 1, page 279. Thank you, brothers. We appreciate you. Let's go back to the actual article, the other article we were reading. Hebrew Israelites believe modern-day Israelites and Europeanized Jews are imposters and not the real descendants of true Israel. The Bible says so, as well as their own scholars. Now, we have a litany of other scriptures to prove it, but we're going to hold it back. Number four, Hebrew Israelites are usually part of the sacred name movement. They believe you must refer to God as Yah or some other name. Their preference for God's name usually depends on the individual sect, which they call a camp. That's what we always say. Some say Yah, some say Yahweh, some say Yahweh, some say Yuhei Wavhe, some say Ahaya, Ashara, Ahaya, the sacred name camps. And as we went, what was the name of the class we did? The name doctrine destroyed. destroyed. You could say any of those names, any names of the Bible, the most I hear is you. Okay, he knows exactly who you're talking to and about. Common ground or truth that they teach, common ground or truth that they teach that is unfortunately often ignored in American Christianity. Okay, was that it? Okay, I think that was it. Oh, no, no, there's more. Number one, Hebrew Israelites believe Jesus Christ was a black man. Whoa, hold it, hold it. That's, hold it. That's the arrogance of the devil. 
You see that? They said that we believe it, in other words, but the Bible don't say that. Exactly. That's, That's what, what they're saying. That, now, in recent, we've been hitting a lot of radio shows and challenging the preachers. Prove to us Jesus Christ is a white man with biblical references. No phone calls ever come in. No, they No, not. the people are calling in, begging their preachers, please call and challenge this man. And there's no calls. No. <laughs> they said no Nobody calls. calls. Not doing that. Right, they're looking for Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> Jesus Christ is a black man. Revelation 1, 14, 15, Daniel 10, 5, and 6. He is a black man. Number two, American or Western Christianity is awash with extra biblical practices with questionable origins. Christmas, right. Easter, mm. New Year's Eve, questionable. Mama's Day, Thanksgiving. You got that right. Okay, give me the precept for that in uh, Titus 114 about commandments of men. Jewish fables. Yeah. American or Western Christianity is awash with extra biblical practices with questionable origins. Read that. Titus chapter 1 verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Right. Commandments of men is Easter. Commandments of men is uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Commandments of men which turn from the truth. Okay, number three. Christianity is too heavily influenced by European culture. You got that right. Job 9.24. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Okay. Then it says, watch this. I share all of this because Kendrick Lamar's popularity and the rise of racism within evangelical Christianity has created a perfect storm. That's the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. Tomorrow, I hope to provide a strategy to help you prepare for this coming storm. Mm. You see that? Everyone is, the world is preparing to fight against the Israelites. You see this is what I want you men and women to see. If you don't get smart on this issue, don't be surprised if some of your peers, kids, and grandkids wind up in a religious hate group. Hold it. So <laughs> you you sitting in a church learning about a lie called Caesar, a lie that it got a fake image of Christ as a white man, that's not a hate group against your own self? Yeah. And look at this special disclaimer. A small minority <laughs> of Hebrew Israelites are not heretical. They are, meaning they believe in white Jesus, Christmas, and Easter. Yeah. Everybody can be saved. They are very similar to other Messianic Hebrew groups within Christianity. They are not the norm, though. They used to say that about Lamar until he dropped those four lines. I used to be your friend, but now you're a nigga. That's exactly. what you're saying. Exactly. That is what's going on. Hey. So, yes, go ahead. Hey, you, <laughs> see, you see what they, what, they, what they said? They said, we got we to gotta prepare a strategy. You understand? You brothers, I hope you all understand what time it is. We are war, man. Esau, Esau is trying to destroy. They're trying to stop this truth. You understand? But read Matthew 16 and 18 real quick. Matthew 16 and 18. Esau, and the way how Esau war, Esau and Esau and coming to kill us personally right now. You understand? The way how we war is he going to push message out there. You see what they tried? They labeling us as as a hate group. You understand? But we not no hate group. You know, we love our people, but that's the label that he put it on us. Read that. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And I, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So you all hear that? The gates of hell ain't going to prevail against this truth, man. So, Mr. White Man that's listening, just understand that you ain't going to prevail against the Israelites and the second coming of Christ. Exactly, exactly. Let me say something real quick because people have to keep their minds in the right channel. When you use the term hate group, you have to apply that term the correct way. When you, take, when you grabbed us and took us into slavery, that was a hate group that did that to you and me. That's a hate group. To have you here that work for 310 some odd years of free slave labor and never pay you nor your ancestors for the work that you've done, that's the, that's the actions of a hate group called white America. Y'all understand that? All of the nations have 
benefited from the blood, sweat, and tears of our people and never thought about paying us a dime. Talking about you can work for, you can work for it. Pull yourselves by, up by your own bootstraps and you have no boots. Hell, he stole your boots. Right. <laughs> and he's telling you to pull yourself up. You ain't got no boots on your feet. Exactly. All right? That's what you call a hate group. And then, then the Bible, the most High comes, Christ gives us the antidote to get out of slavery, to get away from these people, and then they call you a hate group. The white man is lying to you. Esau is lying to you and tricking you and trapping you. We definitely have to start using the words of the Bible. They, they, they want us to call him the white man, but we only use that for the people that don't know. But their real name is Esau, Edom. That is their name. That, those names have power in it. They, when they feel that, they feel that word, Esau. And they look things up. Believe me, they say, you say some word, they look that up. Google it right now. Right. Who's Esau? Let me give them one real <laughs> quick, and I'm going to shut up. Isaiah 34. Y'all saw the word Adumia up there, right? Yeah. And then they're trying to say that Edom is all gone now. Let's see. Oh, you talking about the first Edomite, the preacher. Right. The first, the preacher then had the word up there in the last article that you just put up. Where they had an encyclopedia. It had Edom and Adumia right, oh, right next to each other. Exactly. So let's read it. Uh, Isaiah 34, verse 4 and 5. Read. Isaiah 34, verse 4. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. The host of heaven is talking about this, the Edomites' kingdom. His host, his, his navy, his army, his air force. All that's going to be destroyed when this war come down. Go ahead. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And the heavens, their kingdom is going to be rolled together in a mushroom cloud. The drop thing, the bomb. Like they got this bomb now called the father of all bombs. The mother of all They got bombs. the mother of all bombs. Now they got the father oh, they of all bombs. They got a father of all bombs now. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know that. Wow. Read. <laughs> Read. And all the host shall fall down. And all of them going to die in that war. Go ahead. And the leaf falleth off from the vine. That's how easy the Lord is going to destroy Esau. And as a falling fig from the fig tree. Go ahead. For my sword for shall. God, for God's sword. Shall be bathed in heaven. For God's sword shall be bathed in Esau's heaven. His kingdom. His rulership. Go ahead. Behold. It shall come down upon Idumia. Behold. God's sword of destruction shall come down upon Idumia. I thought they were done away with it. Uh, exactly. <laughs> this, this right here backs up what we read in the Bible dictionary. Yep. Great, Great future, future judgments. judgments. That's why I wanted this read. To let you know that that man didn't write that out of, out of, out of just out in thin air. He wrote that based on what we're reading. Right. Read that again. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Bef behold. My sword shall come down upon the Edomites. Go ahead. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. God is telling you that the Edomites are the people of God's curse to judgment. So they are the people of God's curse. What is the curse? That they are to be used as a channel for God to channel his anger and destruction, his destructive power through. Obadiah 18. That's it. That's, that's the curse. That's the they curse. Gonna be wiped They're going to be wiped out. out. They finished. That's the curse. That's the curse. So... Understand this, brothers. Now, we're almost done. We're almost finished. Because some of you worry about what if people don't believe. It don't mean a hill of beans if people don't believe. It, give me that in Romans 3, 1 and 2. It means nothing if our fathers, mothers, friends, neighbors don't believe. Read that. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Verse, for, yeah, for what? For what if some did not believe? Uh -huh. Shall their unbelief Make the faith of God without effect? Mm -hmm. God forbid. The answer is no. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. It don't mean nothing because friends and neighbors don't believe the Bible. It means nothing. Nothing at all. Just give me 2 Timothy 4. I mean 2 Timothy 2 and 4, please. You brothers, now you heard the Edomites said we have to come up with a strategy. Mm -hmm. This is the importance that's what I tell our brothers in these Christian churches. They don't understand what's coming. They want to keep us docile. They want to keep us uh, brainwashed in Christian lies. Now those days is over. We're rising up. Now Esau's coming against us. Read that for us, please. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. 
And if a man or that's what I wanted. The most high, the Lord chose us to be soldiers. Soldiers of what? Soldiers of righteousness. Soldiers of his word. And we are at war. That's what a war for what? A war for the souls of our people. Our job is to win them into this truth to prepare us for the second coming. That is a war. Esau's job, the devil, right. is to keep them from repenting. That's their job. Good is set against evil as we went over last week. What you just saw in the article that you was reading, Bishop, is that flood, trying to put, trying to put our people back to sleep. Exactly. Yes, yes. The Revelation uh, 12 you're talking right. about. Right, exactly. Get Jeremiah 51, 12. And this is why I, I, I get on brothers, because Esau, you'll be, watch this, brothers, watch this. You, the house will have exploded. People are running out of the house on fire, screaming. And you're seeing it. You're about to do something. Esau goes, hey, um... Let's talk about the Trinity. Is there God in three persons? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? What's more important, brothers? What's more important? The house just blew up. Our brothers and sisters are on fire screaming. But this Edomite want to take us. No, no, look. Let's talk about the three in one. Let's talk about, give me another stupidity. Bishop, like they did last year with the flat earth. Yeah. All of a sudden, you got dumb niggas trying to figure out whether the earth is flat exactly. or round. Exactly. These people are stupid. These are, <laughs> these are strategies and tactics to keep us from the mission. That's why, remember when the woman came up to Christ and said, heal my daughter? What did Christ do? What did Matthew 15, what did he do? He ignored her. It wasn't until she begged and begged and pleaded that he even considered. Hey. We got to be just like that. Hey, Stop Ella. giving them, uh, what's the word, right. credence. Uh, yes. uh, right, exactly. Even, even that situation that happened, happened last year when they put that article out trying to defame the elder. You understand? Right. That's all war tactics. Yep. You understand? To destroy our name, our character for Israel not to repent. There you go. That's good that you pull that out. Because now what they're doing is looking for people who've left here to try to get them to say something bad about here. Go on YouTube and look how many people that left here because they didn't want to keep the law. Now, all of a sudden, there's celebrities on YouTube. <laughs> okay, anything that they could get uh, uh, about uh, any little story from any one of the schools, all of a sudden, they have a big um, announcement that they have XIUIC member, okay? And that title is what they're supposed to use to get views to get people to come and listen. They don't go against the doctrine. They'll have, like, the one idiot that was on there Oh, they told my wife she shouldn't wear pants. That's the stuff that they're going to bring out, stuff like that. When you hear these emotional little children that left hair, these little, the, the, the picture you put up with the fat black man with the dress, it's how you see these, these, these men are that go to these people. How can you be in the truth explaining who the devil is, and when the laws come out, all of a sudden we're bad because we told you what to do according to the most high. And that's the tactics they're using. They're not challenging us based on what the Bible says. They're trying to find things to move public opinion. The same thing they did with Christ. Christ was walking the earth, and what did they do eventually? They got public opinion to scream out, crucify him. How did they do it? Based on lies. Yep. What did they use? Other Israelite camps. Okay, look at how Christ was taken down. He had the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, and the lawyers against him. That's what explains that hate. That that vocab no class Malone brought out there. There are other That's Israelites. It. No <laughs> class Malone. Vocab no it. class Malone. You dummy Christ said, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Hmm. Let's go back into the scriptures and see where the hatred came from. It came from the other Israelite groups that were not in agreement with Christ. There was never a time when they were all together and everybody was kumbaya. Why were they against Christ? Because they, uh, they were against what he stood for as far as delivering the people and rebuilding the nation. So it's not crazy that there are Israelite groups that are the same way. Yep. I hope you all understand that. Give me Isaiah, I mean Jeremiah 51, 12. The book of Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 12. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. The standard is the Bible. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. The standard is the Bible. Go ahead. Make the watch strong. Make the watch. You brothers are the watchmen. Making you strong. This is why we have classes seven, uh, uh, seven, days, seven days a week, three times a day. Camp 101 to make the watch strong. Because Esau's coming up with strategies. 
And, and like Deacon Asaph was saying, they're looking for personal things that you brothers and sisters do to get public opinion against the body, not against an individual. Exactly. There we go Their again. goal is not to destroy an individual. It's to stop this entire movement of Israel growing. You understand what I'm saying? I hope y'all do. Right, because that's what they that's why they're going after this brother here. What's his name? Lamar Kendrick? Kendrick Lamar? Lamar? Yeah. Because of four lines. Because that represents group that represents a whole movement. Because when those words went out, thousands and perhaps millions of people can repent just by listening to that. They say we got a problem. They're going you know what they started doing? Googling Israelites. Who yes. are these Israelites? Now they're gonna see some crazy Israelites. They are crazy Israelites. You got bum Israelites, you got overweight Israelites. <laughs> You got uh, uh, masculine women Israelites. There are all kinds of Israelites out there, feminine Israelites, all kinds. Everything you want is out there. Coonish Israelites, right. they're, they're all out for there. the worst group to put up there, too. Exactly. So they're going to have to shift through it all. Nobody's paying attention to that. Everybody who calls us says, I check all the groups out, and this is the reason why I'm here. Exactly. Okay, so we're not worried about them. And another thing, like the bishop pointed out, he, he puts in an article that, yo, uh, your children or whoever might join a religious hate group. Do you know how much religious hate groups are out there that's crystal clear in their face telling you every day how much they hate white people, they want to kill white people, screaming out Allah Akbar, chopping people up, stabbing people up. There's groups you can see visibly every day that openly make clear their hatred that they have for this country and for this government. That's where your focus should be. There's a man named Kim Jin Yong talking about he's testing missiles to shoot them over here. It's Shouldn't that where your focus should be? <laughs> Why would you be on a bunch of dumb, insignificant Negroes that's making things up in the Bible? Because this truth is worse than those bombs. Uh, thank you. <laughs> that's what the problem thank you. is. This truth is Y'all got to look at what's going on. There are people who clearly say, people who interfere with the election, okay? Interfere with your presidency. Openly call America lies. Openly do things against America, but this is who you focus on. A bunch of dumb niggas who don't understand the Bible. It makes no sense. Exactly. Now, watch this. Give me uh, First Peter's 2 and 17. The problem is we're not niggas. <laughs> this is how the Lord <laughs> teaches us to conduct ourselves. We don't go around saying we want to hate, we hate white people, we want to kill them. That's, that's not our talk. Watch this. Now, we're going to tell you the prophecy of what's going to happen. But we're not out to saying, kill, kill, kill. That's right. You do got groups that do that, though. Like, you got clan, religious clan groups Openly. that say they want to kill us Openly. and kill all black people. But we don't run the street talking about, kill whitey, kill white. No, that's not us. Read that. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. That's how we're to conduct ourselves. So when we're around white people, we're going to deal with them right. Okay? Now, if we're teaching... The deliverance of our people. Here come the white man. Uh, can we talk about the, the what size feet Jesus had? I'm not talking about that. I'm going to say, hey, hey, brother, take our friendly neighborhood uh, Edomite here and take him on the side and you deal with him over there. But in, then get back to business. Why? Because their focus is always to stop you from teaching Israel. That's what they want to do. Don't fall for that trick. It's a tactic. Or Bishop. They'll come in certain cases and agree, but then say that there's salvation for the Gentiles. They bring arguments about who the Gentiles are. They'll try and twist the gospel into saying, okay, yes, you're the Israelites and you're going to be delivered, but the Gentiles are going to be delivered also, and we're Gentiles. Exactly. Okay, so that's why the bishop says, make the watch strong. You have to be able to explain who the scriptures are that refer to the Gentiles, the Israelites, the ones that are in a Gentile state of mind, and the real Gentiles. Because they're sitting now, like the bishop said, studying how to confound you and have you in confusion. They are on their way out, and their job is to take as much of you as they can with them. Exactly. That's their whole purpose. Yep. They already know. The powers that be knows their time is up. But what Satan wants is a high body count. And guess what? Here's the sad part. He's going to be very successful. The scriptures say many are called, few are chosen. This is for a chosen few. Most of you are going to fall off. Most of you are going to get caught up in the lies. And most of you are going to be destroyed. Because you don't study, you don't listen, you care about what the world has to offer. And that's why Christ said, remember Lot's wife. Oh, man, what are you talking about? Okay. You, you dropped it. 
That's why Christ said, remember Lot's wife. Some of you are sitting here and listening to the sound of our voice and getting overwhelming proof that somehow something in the world going to pull you behind right back into being a nigger, except you're going to be a nigger on fire. Walk in charcoal. Okay, you walk in charcoal. That's what the scriptures say. All the prophets explain. That's why the scriptures say that it shall come to pass. Two-thirds of my people shall be cut off and die. And I will bring the third part through the fire. So let's look at the, realist, the, the reality of the situation. More than half of the population of the Israelites are going to die. This is not a black and white thing. This is a righteous versus evil thing. And most of you have not got over being wicked. You're still in secret sin. You're still in lies. Okay? Exactly, 100% correct. If y'all ever get a chance, I don't know how many of you saw the, the, the debate with uh, Bishop Kanai, myself, and the Christian pastors. They tried that same tactic during the, the, the so-called debate. They want to talk about the blood of Jesus or water baptism. I'm looking at the paper. Give, give, um, give me a piece of, give me a paper. Give me a tissue, something. Something, give me something. No, don't give me that. Yeah. I'm reading the paper. Y'all want to talk about, and I'm looking at all the destroyed black people in the audience. So y'all want to talk about the blood of Jesus and water baptism? Okay. Give me Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> Your job is to control the people. Don't let unlearned people control. Give me that in Titus. Uh, teach with all authority. You know what I want? 215. You're, you are the teachers. You are the leaders. Don't listen to these numbskulls, these idiots set up by the white man to deter you from the main mission That's to save the souls of our people. Exactly. That's the same thing of like saying having an assault on the rap game like we was reading before. They don't get to tell us how to do our own music exactly. and you don't get to tell us how to deal with our Bible. Exactly. And that's why we turn down all your invitations. You know how many people keep calling us now to come and step in the arena with them to argue foolishness? They don't want to go over the bread and butter of these scriptures. They want to have a list of things that they want us to talk about, and we ain't talking about that. You're wasting our time, no matter how much money you offer. Right. Every week, there's somebody new calling us, saying they want to sit down, calling with a polite voice, saying we want to go over this and we want to go over that. We want to go over the difference with the Israelite camps. We don't care about the difference of the Israelite camps. We care about this camp right here. The other camps, like the bishop said, they are brothers and sisters, and we love them. May the Lord have mercy on their souls. And we hope that somehow they find their way. But we know where we're going, and we ain't letting nobody move us no other place. That's right. We got a job to do. Read that. Titus chapter 2, verse 15. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Y'all see that? He emphasized the right two words, all authority. You, When you're teaching, you have all authority. Don't let a knucklehead turn you talk about water baptism and argue about the blood of the lamb. No, no, no. That is not. The mission is to save our people. Wake them up. They want to keep you in a one-hour disagreement about water baptism mm. or the size of Jew Jesus' sandals. Exactly. I don't care the size of Jesus' sandals. The hell is this? Right. That's why the scripture said that he has commanded his sanctifying. We are commanded to teach with all authority. Why? Because it is our book. You don't get to tell us how to teach our Bible. The hell would you? <laughs> You know, tell me about that, Bishop. You're going to get that from our own people. When you read the book of Acts, okay, when Paul was trying to bring the, the brothers and sisters into the faith, you had, um, I, I think it was, ah, uh, what chapter was that? But they screamed out, great is Diana. <laughs> okay? They, he's trying to bring them to Christ, to the understanding of Christ. And you got some knucklehead Negro screams out, Greatest Diana of Ephesus. Yeah. Because they know how simple a lot of you are. When you read the book of Acts, it's 19 verse 34. It was the same thing. They were trying to not get people not to listen to Paul. So in the middle of when they see the, the, the power of Paul, the persuasion of Paul, some nigga screams out, greatest Diana. Okay? And it's the same thing right now, except they're screaming, greatest white man Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes and pale skin. You <laughs> niggas hate yourself. And be like Uncle Ruckus from the Boondocks. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So like Deacon Yawasab said, we'll close out here. Revelation 12 about the great red dragon. 12 and verse 15. Okay. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. 
that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Give me the precept for the water in Hebrews. Uh, four, is it where? Ephesians 4.13, thank you. 4.14, somewhere right there. About carried away. He uses the word carry away. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. That's what we were just reading in the article. That's what we saw with that preacher standing at the pulpit. Okay? That's the slight of men. Cunning craftiness. And that they're looking for the simple among us that they can deceive. So when we go back to Revelation 12 and 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood his, after the woman. His mouth is his media. His mouth is his media. His instruments of communication. Which is the internet. Television, radio, magazines, newspapers. That's his mouth, meaning that's how he communicates. What comes out of his mouth? It says water as a flood, meaning all kinds of lies, okay? All kinds of heretical uh, heresies or heterodoxical doctrines. Is that the word they use? That's what comes out of their mouth. Go ahead. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. He wants the Israelites to be carried away of the flood of their lies. Go ahead. And the earth helped the woman. The earth is talking about this Bible helped the Israelites. The woman is the Israelites, the 12 tribes. The earth is talking about is the Bible. The Bible helped the Israelites. Go ahead. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth. And the Bible opened her mouth. And swallowed up the flood. And swallowed up the lies. Which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Which Esau, the so-called white man, cast out of his media. That's what it's talking about in layman's terms. Everybody understand that? So if you didn't get it, ask somebody and write it down. I want to say something real quick. The importance of calling, uh, the importance of identifying him as Esau goes much heavier than what you might think. Because he, because he hates that so much. Every time we bring out the truth in the Bible... He's got a video up trying to debunk it, trying to cut it out, trying to say they're not Esau and all that. You want to know the reason why that's so dangerous to him? Because once we as a people understand that he's Esau, that removes the special status that you once had for him. And once, once you don't see him as this special status sickness that you have in your mind, then you will begin to think clearer. But as long as you hold him up as next to Jesus, next to God and all of this, you will always be on straddling the fence. But once the truth, like the scripture speaks about him being revealed for who he really is, Esau, once you really bring out who he really is, then it causes you to reevaluate your sickness. It causes you to reevaluate the status that you have for him. Then, you'll be, then you will really look at him for what he really is, an Edomite, <laughs> a, a person that's going to, a nation that's going to be destroyed by God. So when they say, you're going to kill me, you want to kill me? Listen, the Bible teaches us to honor all men. The Bible teaches us to be at peace with That's all right. men. That's what the Bible teaches Bishop. us. <laughs> Christ said, be wise as a serpent and what? Harmless as a dove. You've never seen no video of us calling for the death of anybody. Okay? And as hard as you're trying to lump us in with all the other groups, we just stay in a course and everybody's seeing the difference. Okay? Because if you look, like I said last night and I've been saying always, every day you wake up, do a search and put I-U-I-C in it. Guess who talking about us the most? The other groups. There's always some other Israelite group when you do a search talking about, oh, their Passover. Oh, their beards. Oh, did you see how the bishop had his hand? What they got to do with salvation? Okay? Just pay attention. Wake up. Right. Um, that's, that's heavy that the deacon just bring out. But Christ said that we got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Reason why? Because in this truth, you got you to gotta evolve. You understand? You brothers cannot be on the street cursing the white man out all the time. And, and, and you got crackheads. You got our people suffer, suffering from all different, all type of sickness, and you cursing the white man out. 
You know what I mean? We don't want to see that in none of the camps, man. And any one of you camp leaders, you all out there and you all got men talking reckless, we going to shut the whole camp down. I'm telling you all straight. That's right. right. Let Come you all know, listen, you all can't go to camp no more. You all ain't built for this. Because if you all go out there and you all cursing Esau out, you understand? And you all seeing Israel and you all ain't teaching Israel. And you are talking hate. Oh, we hate the white man and this and them things come out of your mouth and we see them videos or hear about it. We shut the camp down. Plain and simple. You letting you all know straight up, plain and simple because that's not the image that we push it. We here to teach our people repentance. That's right. We here to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why we went out on the street. Exactly. That's why we on the street teaching. I got a story. The brothers in Atlanta, it's funny. It's a funny story. They know it, but it's funny. They were one of the first ones to get a syndicated radio show in Atlanta. So I spoke with a couple of them, and they said, well, what should we go over? I said, listen, this is big. I said, make uh -huh. sure your focus is Israel. Don't deal with white folks. Don't get on them. Just deal with Israel. They went good for about three weeks, four weeks. Then the fifth week, one of them got an itch and said, I got to curse out the white man. All kind of devil bombs was dropping. All kind of deaf scriptures. Esau called the radio station and said, pull the plug on them niggas. Boop! Show was over. So then I said, brothers, was it worth it? Now the Israelites that wanted to hear and learn, they can't hear and learn no more. Because you got a carrot stuck up somewhere and you want to get on it, the white man. Right. So we got to focus. Right. What's right. more important? That's the point. Exactly. Last scripture. I know, brother, I'm sending me text messages say you're going too long. First Peter's 4, this is the sum up. First Peter 4 and 15. Read that. The book of First Peter chapter 4, verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Let none of you brothers or sisters suffer as a murderer. Or as a thief. Or as a thief stealing things. Or as an evil doer. Or as an evil doer. That goes into a, a litany of things. You plotting against the country. You wish making death threats. That's evil. Evil doers cover a whole list of things. We don't want to hear no talk like that. Go ahead. Or as a busy body in other men's matters. Don't be involved in other men's matters. Now. Hello, Israel. I'm Eldon Nathaniel with Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.